I'm Bennett. This is Living My Alaska. Springtime in the land of the midnight sun means birch syrup season. We spend days constructing a homemade sap boiler and now it's time to test it. We spend many days collecting and boiling birch sap. We chop wood, we feed the stove for one very sweet outcome, the deliciously wild birch syrup. Stay to the end because I share with you what it tastes like on homemade biscuits. Let's go. Okay, let's see what we got from our first tree. Hmm. Nothing in that one. I know we had tap, sap flowing because I can see the liquid here. Let's check this other one. Not much sap in there at all. Okay, so I'm a little bit disappointed this morning. I don't nearly have as much sap in my buckets as I expected I would. It was flowing so well yesterday. One of the problems I think is we have a much colder day today and it got well below freezing last night. So my concern is we're a little early, but I hope we get more flow. But in the meantime, I have something else for you that's super cool and I'm really excited. So I woke up this morning to the news from my game camera. I don't know if you guys can see this, but right there in the bottom left-hand corner of this photo is the back end and the tail of a fox. So I wanna reset that game camera. Let's go do that right now. One of the things about living in the backcountry of Alaska is you have a constant challenge of things like this. There's our game camera. What I wanted to share with you is, here's what we're looking at. That little fox ran right by here. And this is his trail. And something else that's really interesting is right there. That is a den. I'm not sure if that's a fox den, but you can see the old tracks coming into this den. Something's living under there. And my hope is if the camera looks straight this way into the forest, it will grab the fox as he's coming down the trail. The den is right there, so I think I want to put the camera back there looking this way. So we're fighting sinking snow here. So the good news is winter is over, so I'm not expecting any deep snow dumps. So I can put my camera lower down and hopefully catch the little critter as he's running across. So here's the camera, and here's what the camera sees. It's going to look directly down that trail. So we're going to continue to watch this, and I have a hunch changing this camera angle will help a lot. Okay, let's see if we can get out of here. This is a great strainer to use to put clean sap into these pans. Then we will strain it again. Once we boil it down, we'll run it through a much finer strainer. I think we have almost 10 gallons of sap from the trees here. 10 gallons of sap, I estimate, will give us about 10 ounces of finished syrup. And so the goal is to boil it about 90% down here and then take it into the house and put it on the pot on the electric stove to finish it. I'm shoving that firewood in little chunks all the way to the back of this very deep wood stove. So I get an even burn. And as it burns down, I'm gonna move those coals and distribute them so we don't have a whole bunch of heat back here and a little bit of heat up here. I'm gonna leave this open a little while for it to get as much air through here as possible. And as I hear it start to crackle, that's such a beautiful sound, that crackling sound. Come check this out. Can you guys hear that? That's such a nice sound. It's awesome. It's warm, it's reassuring. So these are my birch pans. This is the birch sap. And yes, it's pretty clean. There's little brown specks in there, but that's the bottom of the pan that's been discolored from use. And you can see it's already starting to make heat. Next step, chopping firewood. It feels good to swing an ax. <laughs> it feels good when that wood splits like you want it to as well. It's embarrassing when I swing it incorrectly and all you get to watch it and laugh at me. And as you can see, it's starting to boil. See all of this foam on top? Those are bubbles. The fire is cooler at the front of this barrel. And as you can see, a lot less bubbles. I don't mind this. This will be a boiler pan. This will be a finishing pan, and that'll work just out, work out just great. We got some good fire going on. Check this out. Let's see what we can do to uh, distribute this fire a little bit. You can see the steam coming off these pans. A little bit dirty in that pan. We're gonna filter all that out, don't worry about it. Let's go collect some more sap.
There are our taps. 12 trees, 12 taps. And we're expecting about a gallon per day from each tap. That would be super cool. So let's see what we have. Yep, I feel some in there. About a half gallon in that one. Same in this one, maybe almost a gallon overnight. We have two more buckets here. These trees, one of these trees is a bit larger. I'm having big expectations for that. Whoa, this thing's full. Oh, that's two gallons. Very nice. It's about another 1.5 gallons, so we probably have, I don't know, almost four gallons in this bucket already. Really good time. Extremely rewarding. It's time to go get a new bucket because this five gallon bucket is almost full. Bird sap boiling. It's a very slow process. Now we wait. We're boiling sap. We have 10 gallons in each one of these pans. We have another 15 gallons waiting. We're collecting probably almost 15 gallons overnight. 12 trees, 12 taps, one in each tree. This is not water. This is birch sap straight out of the tree. And it's beautiful and it's delicious. It's cold, semi-sweet, a little bit earthy. Cheers. This is birch sap and it's starting to boil. And that is basically white foam that is produced when we boil the sap. So you can see how hot this is getting. Look at this, how white it is. To quote Paris Hilton, that's hot. So we're now gonna shove this wood to the back. We're getting quite a nice bed of coals in there. And that's where your real heat comes from. Oh boy, this is gonna be quite the job. And so as we boil it down, we have to skim that off. It's a simple process of taking a cheap plastic spoon, something that's heat tolerant, of course. You just skim it off and sling it out. And it's better to stay on top of it so it, you don't have to do it all at once. But it's not hurting anything. And as it boils down, I'm gonna have a finer strainer that I can use to continue to clean up this sap. And I see it's starting to turn colors as it boils down. It's just a little bit darker than clear now. And I'd like it to boil a little faster, so I think I'm going to feed just a bit more wood in here. And I have a treat for you guys, something I haven't done in a long time. So while my wife and I were living in Switzerland, we were on a train one evening going back to Davos and I told her, I said, I wanna get more into the Swiss culture. I wanna partake in some of the Swiss habits and learn more about what they do for fun. And I didn't know what that was going to be. So I got off the train and there was this old man with a long white beard sitting on a tree stump near the train station. And he was smoking a pipe, a tobacco pipe. And so I thought, that's what I want to do. So essentially with a tobacco pipe, you don't inhale this stuff, right? You just simply sip it and then let it come out. And the flavor and the aroma is wonderful. And it's one of those things that gets you to slow down. I just got my first whiff of sweetness from that birch syrup. I can start to smell it. Oh, that's a good smell. Your first bed of coals, it's like that. Oh, it smells so good. It's a lovely smell depending on the flavor of the tobacco. That back pan is starting to boil. That's really what we want, just a slow rolling boil. And that's going to speed things up quite a bit. Life is good. Cheers. A very nice rolling boil. That is what we want throughout the process. But I'm noticing that this front pan is not boiling. And it looks like my design indicates that all the heat goes to the back. So it might be the reality that says, this is my warming pan, this is my finishing pan, I guess. We'll see. And I'm skimming off the uh, the white foam that pops up and we've got nothing else to do besides just keep an eye on this anyway. So <laughs> I've just entertained myself. I'd like to get this front pan to start boiling like this back pan. So maybe I'll move wood to the front and see if that helps. So what we've done, as you can see, is moved the fire to the front. I can hear the boil happening. So it's very hot. And I better keep an eye on that and make sure it doesn't boil over. Yeah, I think that works because I see bubbles forming in the bottom of this pan now. So because we moved the heat to the front, we now have more heat up here that's gonna help.
It's been a long day of sap boiling and chopping wood. This is what we have, I guess. This is about a four quart saucepan. This is the result of about eight hours of boiling and 10 gallons of raw sap out of the birch tree. And this is what we have left. And we're currently at 203 degrees and we're boiling it to near 220. And when it gets to 220, that means it's finished. So you can see it's getting very thick, even as, as it's hot, it's super dark and it smells amazing. This is what it looks like. When you boil it to 180, it makes this delicious amber golden color. It almost looks like a whiskey, but it's sweet, like a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi. But all we've done is just boil down the raw sap and it's fantastic and it's just delicious to drink hot or cold. And you could also use it to sweeten other teas like a chaga tea. And so my goal is to make enough to have several bottles of it like this to last me throughout the year. So we're at currently at 203. I'm not going to step away from this stove. I got to watch this. If it goes over 220, then we've burned it and we've lost an entire day and 10 gallons worth of sap. So we're going to watch it. And when it gets to 220, I'll share with you what it looks like as we put it in the jars. We're making progress. We are at 203 degrees. And if you're wondering where I got my kit for all these supplies, so when I brought the sap that I, was outside on the boiler in here, we had already run it through a larger filter. And when we brought it in here, I ran it through this fine mesh. When it comes out of the tree, it has something called a sand. I say sand in quotation marks because that's what they call it. But you can see in there, it's just these little fine particles and that stuff makes it bitter. So you've got to run it through something like this cloth before you start to finish it. And so we've done that now. So we've got a very clean product here. And by the way, um, my kit came from a company called Sap Happy. So this technically is a maple syrup sap kit, but it works just fine for birch syrup. They even sent me the instructions on exactly how to do this. Now it's a little bit different, but I don't find the process for making birch syrup any different. The temperatures are the same. The process is the same. Sap Happy didn't pay me to advertise this. They don't know who I am. I don't really know who they are. I just want to share this with you in case you're curious. I will put a link to the Sap Happy website in uh, the description for this video. So you guys, if you're curious, can go find this too. If you follow these directions, I think you'll have pretty good results. And one last thing to show you is this stuff's getting real dark. And when I scoop it in the ladle, it's heavy. This is not water, folks. This is starting to be syrup and it's just beautiful, but the spoon is heavy because of the weight of the syrup. Okay, folks, here it is, the finished product. We've boiled this to a temperature of 117 to 119 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's sticky and it's sweet. And so what we do is we put it into these jars, and while it's hot, I will put the sealing lid on. And the heat will eventually seal this and it will pop closed like that. Now because this is my first batch, I'm going to put some in these little four ounce jars I found. These don't seal, you just screw it on. And I'm going to do that, I'm going to give this to some of my neighbors as a little gift. This is how it will look as a finished product. And it's a really cute, really cute little jar. What a treat. And you so you could put a sticker on there, wrap a bow around it or something like that good idea. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. And it's delicious and it's amazing. We have much more of this. This will be my this will be my job about for the next 10 days, all day every day boiling outside and then bringing it in here to finish it off. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. More to come. See you soon. Okay, everyone, it is um, about 6.30 p.m. Day two of some very long days of sap boiling. The sun has gone from over here across to over there. What I wanted to show you was look at the color of these two boiler pans. So what you have here is new sap coming out of a tree. And this is what it looks like after about eight hours of boiling it and constantly adding from here to here. This is basically a warming pan. And what happens is as it warms, and this level drops, I move it from here to here. I'm not gonna add any more tonight because I want to, <laughs> I want to be a, asleep by midnight at least. And so I'm gonna try to boil this down and then I will take this pan inside and finish it on the stove tonight in the house to finish it to syrup. 
And every day we do this for about the next seven days. It's very enjoyable, it's very relaxing, but it is a lot of work for a little bit of syrup. And so I have a bucket on my table with the fine mesh filter in it. This is what the filter looks like. We will pour that sap through that filter and it will catch any fine sediment that's left in this. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells really good. Probably could have gone a little longer outside, but I'm ready to go in for the night and I don't want to burn that sap. Okay, so we're back inside the house. This is our sap. It's been filtered once already. I'm going, as I pour it in this pot, I'm going to filter it once more. I'm filling my pot at about three quarters of the way full. You do not want it to boil over. That looks good. So it's time to turn on the stove, turn it to about medium high heat where it's gonna start to uh, give me just a bit of a rolling boil, but no more. We're looking for 220 degrees Fahrenheit for our finishing. So last night, I finished it to 217 degrees Fahrenheit and I was not happy with the end product. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is last night's end product at 217. And my problem is, it's a bit thin, but I want it to be a little thicker because when I put it on biscuits or pancakes or waffles or whatever, I want it to be thick enough. So my plan is to put this back in this pot. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and do it now. Wow, that's good. I'd like it to be just a bit thicker. So we are going to cook down what we made last night, plus what we've made today, to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And that should give us a little bit thicker, finely finished syrup. And I can't wait to share with you what it tastes like on a biscuit. Here's what we have. You can see this is an aggressive rolling boil. And we are right at 220 degrees Fahrenheit. It's time to take this off. Technically it says 219, but that's close enough. It's currently 11 p.m. I started boiling 12 gallons of sap this morning at 11 a.m. or probably a little bit before 11 a.m. and it's 11 p.m. It took us 12 hours to boil 12 gallons of sap down to the finished product and it's ready to be put into these jars. It's very hot. So my plan is to transfer it to this pouring dish from Pyrex. I brought this pan in here to be finished off at about about 8.30 p.m. tonight, so it's taken two and a half hours. And what I want you to see is how thick, even when it's hot, you can see it's a bit heavy and thick. So I'm super excited about that. I think this is gonna be some fantastic stuff. Let's get it out of that hot pot. So we're gonna put it in these jars and then we'll put lids. And in the process of cooling, the jars will seal. And it looks like I'm still gonna make a little bit of a mess. I'm dripping on my floor. Boss lady's not gonna like that. Ooh, it smells fantastic. All right, there we go, folks. This is what we get from approximately 12 gallons of raw sap in 12 hours of cooking. So now we put these on here while it's nice and hot. And as it cools overnight, these jars will seal. I'm happy with the end result. I almost forgot. I promised you this morning we would try this on a biscuit. We're gonna pour a little bit of this nice hot birch syrup all over this biscuit and let's see how we did. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. It's not nearly as sweet as a maple, much more earthy, more of a molasses texture, and it's wonderful on a homemade biscuit. I have so many super cool videos for you to see, and we have so much to share with you. Please like, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. Send us an email make some comments check out the videos how we when we went to denali national park last year in the camper van we have some super cool springtime videos coming very soon cheers from living my alaska we'll see you next time